Yo, this is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. All right, man. Uh, Tim Tazu dominates Jeff Horn. I had never seen Tim Tazu fight in a professional fight in its entirety. He's 25 years old. What is he, 16 and over, 12 knockouts, and now he's being lined up for a WBO title shot. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video today. Now I call him the king of Aussie boxing. It was also good to see some fights with some fans in the stands. So Australia must be doing really, really good with a COVID-19 protocol. So, um, you know, it was just one side butt kicking the whole fight. I mean, Tim Tzu, um had excellent footwork, excellent control of distance. And then his body shots was what was the difference. You know what I'm saying? Third round, he dropped Jeff Horn with a left hook. Jeff Horn barely made the count. Well, he made the standing eight count. And he just considered, he just kept beating Jeff Horn ass across the ring. And, you know, I think, you know, he also had one of Jeff Horn's, um, you know, trainers in this corner as well, too. They had a judge controversy, controversy, and they didn't need the judges, all right? What happened was, I think they figured with Jeff Horn, you know, coming up and down, going up and down the weight scale, that, um, you know, that going to the body was best. You know, when you have problems, when you drain yourself, like Jeff Horn did at 47, and then when he jumped up to like 60, and then it's going to be hard to come back down to 54 and be functionable for Jeff Horn, not taking nothing away from Tim uh, Zhu, you know, but he did the right thing going to the body. He's trying to defy the laws of moving up and down in weight, and it's not easy. And I don't think Jeff Horn, you know, can compete at 54. You know what I'm saying? He shouldn't have jumped up to 60 and fought Michael Zephyr to begin with. He should have competed at 54, but his body wasn't going to hold there for long anyway. But Zhu was just the, the better fighter. You know what I'm saying? Um, he kept, you know, Jeff Horn at the end of his punches. And he kept Jeff Horn around, I think, just to get a fans to show and play with him a little bit, to be honest. He could have took him out anywhere after the third round. You know what I'm saying? And he just went upside his head, dug to the body, Jeff Horn was stumbling and drunk across the ring. And Zhu showed that, hey, perhaps he may be a world-class fighter. He ain't one of those dudes like Chavez Jr. who just, you know, you know, using his daddy name to be good or Shane Mosley Jr. Tim Tzu, you know, maybe he might be one of the next best legacies in boxing because he shows some really, really good skills. He shows some really good technique. He showed this, you know, father's punching power. Um, and he showed some good body work and to go to the body you know, with only, you know, 16 fights the way he did and kept going to the body, um, that that's what you need to do. You know, as far as Jeff Horn, you know, he took he took a butt kick. He showed that he was tough, but he quit. And I'll get there in a minute. But Tim Tzu, he's a good fighter. Um, and he went up Jeff Horn head, and he just kept going to the body, didn't punch himself out, kept himself composed, continued to pick, it, pick his shots. He never got too happy. You know, and eventually he was he was going to let the show get closed come to him. He wanted the knockout come to him. He didn't go out there and be reckless and get that knockout. He was being patient and systematically breaking, you know, Jeff Horn down. And basically that's what he did. He touched him to the head a little bit, touched him to the body a little bit, took his time. And basically, you know, if he wanted to step it up and stop Jeff Horn, the referee was going to stop it. Regardless, Jeff Horn was just in there on borrowed time from after the third round. It was utter domination um, now, did he beat the best version of Jeff Horn? I think not. I think, you know, the Crawford fight, the Pacquiao fight, the two Zephyr fights, I think they took a lot out of Jeff Horn. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that, you know, draining himself at 47 for so long, going up to 60, coming back down to 154 pounds, I think it took its toll on Jeff Horn. And I think Jeff Horn is probably going to be finished in the sport of boxing. I mean, it was iffy when you get, you know, beat up by Michael Zephyr and barely beat him in the second fight. So I just think Jeff Horn had a run. I think Jeff Horn was effective at 47 because of his natural size and ability to absorb, absorb punishment. And he absorbed it very, very well at 47. And I just think, you know, just with all the wars he'd been in, and I don't think he was a natural 60. I think his best weight was 47. And I just don't think he was has enough skills physically to move up and dominate guys. And you know, Tim Zhu showed him that um, yeah, this is this is his last stop. And I think it's time for him to kind of move on now. Um, as far as Tim Zhu, where can he go from here? Is he ready for Patrick Teixeira? 
or Brian Carlos Castanos or Terrence Crawford. Those are the three guys uh, that could hold the WBO belt by he by the time he get his chance. Crawford is engaged in um, you know talks to fight you know uh, Kell Brook. But we know Kell Brook is a career pull, pull out, pull her out, pull her out of her. He will pull out of a fight. Um, you know, so Crawford could next option from what I understand could be to share. Um, you know, obviously Cristanos isn't the mandatory, but by Crawford being a super WBO champion, he can move up or down the weight class and that his mandatory takes precedence over the original mandatory, the weight class. So I think it's probably going to be Cristanos or, or to share they gun fight and, you know, down the line, Tim Tazu will have an opportunity to fight. For that title, but I do think if Castanos get that title, they gonna run it over and burst the winner of Rosario and J. I mean Rosario and um, Jamil Charlo. I think they gonna fight. And I think let's just say Jamil Charlo wins. I think he gonna you know dispense all the bills, and I think he gonna move up to 160, and his brother gonna move up to 68. Um, you know, so at this point, you know, I think Tim Zhu will probably get a shot at the vacant belt. So I think he will be a world world champion. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But, you know, is he world class level yet? Um, he looked pretty good, but it's a lot of monsters at 154 pounds. It's big and strong. So, I mean, I think he right there. But that's a really deep division with a lot of great talent from the prospects of Charles Conwell's to the guys that's by, or scratching for titles like Erickson Lubin and to the guys that's former world champions that have been stopped. J Rock and J or, or lost J Rock and heard, you know, so it'd be opportunity for him. I just think, uh, you know, everybody is just so close in skill level at 154 pounds. I think Tim Tazu is gonna fit right in, but it's some monsters up there and he should tread lightly. But, um, yeah, Jeff Horn quit. All right, Jeff Horn did quit. It wasn't his, I mean, I, I can't say it wasn't his fault, but. His corner asked him, did you get one more round, one more punch? Can you do it? And Jeff Horn, you know, basically they put him on the spot and the camera was right in there and he quit. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to the trainer to protect this fighter from quitting. If you see your fighter can't go no more, you ask him questions and he hesitant, you know what I'm saying? Throw the damn towel in, okay? They made Jeff Horn look bad. If this the end of Jeff Horn boxing legacy, he go back to being a teacher or whatever he choose to be. You know, at the end of the day, I think he's going to have a gripe to pick with them or a bone to pick with them as far as, you know, putting them on the spot, talking about, are you, are you going to quit? Do you want he got one more round left? And, oh, he's done. He's done. And they was in there arguing in his corner, and the corner supposed to be calm, even in times of or turmoil, the times of high tension and in trouble. You know what I'm saying? He posed, you know, he posed to know his fighter, and he didn't, you know, wasn't that Glenn Rustin didn't know his fighter. You know, and he put him on the spot, and basically – that was the worst case scenario. I know maybe it's profitable to Jeff Horn, him not to get knocked out on the canvas or not to hit the ground or not let the referee stop him on the ropes. But he should have went out and just got knocked down on the canvas and, and, and took the 10 count. Because his trainer put him on the spot to quit. You know, his trainer, you know, made him quit. And now everybody going to look at him as a quitter. And that's the legacy you want to leave. You know, better off your legacy could have been. I beat Manny Pacquiao. I fought Terrence Crawford on the world champion stage. I fought, you know, went up to 160, had two good fights with the stripper, Michael Zephra. And then, you know, it was just Tim Tazu time to shine. You know what I'm saying? But now people are going to remember that Tim Tazu knocked his dick in the dirt and made him quit like a baby back bitch. You know what I'm saying? That's what people are going to remember. And it's unfortunate because it didn't have to be like that. You know, we all knew he didn't have nothing left. He went out there two or three more rounds after he should have, and they should have threw that tile in. They should have protected the fighter, and that just let you know that some of these coaches out here, a lot of these coaches don't even know boxing. They don't even know proper protocol, how to say they fighter, you know, from the embarrassment of quitting or how to say they fighter from themselves. And that coach that Jeff Horn, that Jeff Horn in his corner was Glenn Rustin, he made Jeff Horn look really, really bad. And he made Jeff Horn look like a legit quitter tonight. Even though we know Jeff Horn was going out there round after round, you know, even though he didn't have no gas in the tank and giving it his all, when they should have protected him from looking like a quitter, protected his safety, they should have threw them that tile in way before that eighth round concluded. You know what I'm saying? They gave him a few more rounds, a couple more rounds. By the time, you know, by the time the seventh round, sixth round concluded, they should have threw that tile in. But hey, that's their prerogative. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, congratulations to Costa Zoo. He wins what is the eighth round stoppage where he retired. Um, Jeff Horn after the eighth round. 
And I'm not sure technically what they can call it. But hey, don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, response, your video request. Also got a Facebook group, all those links in the description. If you ever have a YouTube business question, inquiry, response, your video request, or you just want to chop it up, Twitter is the fastest way to reach me. Then IG and Facebook. Want to make a donation? Cash app CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well. Best way to donate is just to share the videos. And um, you know, appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you guys think. Congratulations to Tim Zoo making his father Costa Zoo proud. And I think we might have a world champion on our hands here one day. One time for the one time. New King of Aussie. We go.